Hi, everyone. Welcome to this panel. Uh, we are so excited to have you. Uh, my name is Kayla St. Clair, and I'm serving as the facilitator for this session. Um, just a few housekeeping notes before we get started. You can use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen to ask any questions that you may have. Um, so please be sure that if you have questions, you're clicking on Q&A um, and you're asking those. We do have a panelist who is monitoring the chat. Um, and we'll be sure that we answer your questions um, as we are able to. Um, your camera and microphone are turned off, so that Q&A is the only way to ask questions. Um, so you're muted, your video is off, the panelists are not able to see or hear you. This is just one of many sessions that are happening. Um, we have lots of sessions uh, dedicated to the transfer process. Um, in particular, if that's something hopefully that you are interested in, please be sure to check out our full offerings. Um, and then this presentation is being recorded. So just know that you can come back to it at any time and it will be hosted on the StriveScan website. Um, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to our presenters um, and we will conclude at the end of the panel with a few more housekeeping notes. All right, so thank you all for joining us today. My name is Savannah Oxner, and I am an admissions counselor at Sweetbriar College. I am um, going to take you through some of the basics here. We're going to be presenting today on how to navigate the transfer process at a private school. It's easy and affordable. And I have with me today some wonderful women from Holland University, Randolph College, and University of Lynchburg. Each of us is going to take a little bit here um, at a time, but we want to just go ahead and say up front that we would encourage you, if you see anything along the way that you would want to screenshot just to help you later, we hope that you're here today because you really want to hear from one of us in particular or maybe more than one of us in particular and we are going to end this presentation with a couple of great slides that just sum up all of the information that we share along the way so please feel free to do that i want to take a second and let each of us go through and introduce us introduce ourselves in order and tell you a little bit about our school so penelope you want to go ahead and start us off hello everyone this is penelope doss i'm the transfer student coordinator and i'm a financial aid counselor at randolph college um, Randolph College is a private liberal arts and sciences college located in Lynchburg, Virginia. Uh, we're known for our diverse close-knit community of about 650 students and we offer 33 majors and 43 minors with three graduate programs. Hello, I am Susan Hogg and I'm the Associate Director for Admissions um, and I handle transfer and adult students at the University of Lynchburg. We are also a small private uh, liberal arts college in Lynchburg, Virginia. We have about 2,000 undergraduate students and 1,000 graduate students. Uh, we are known, or we, what makes us stand out a little bit is we do have direct admit pathways for eight of our master and one doctorate programs. So if you know you're interested in, a, in getting a master's, whether that's um, athletic training, MBA, uh, PA medicine, or physical therapy, we do have direct admit pathways. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Tristan Kitts. I'm a Senior Assistant Director of Admission at Hollins University. I also work with our transfer and our Horizon students, which are our adult learning students. Um, Horizon, or excuse me, Hollins is a university located in Roanoke, Virginia, and we are an all women's institution. We're also a small private um, institution with around 800 students total. And some of our most popular majors do include biology, English, creative writing, um, communication studies, and business, just to name a few. Thank you. And again, I am Savannah Oxner from Sweetbriar College. I'm the Associate Director for Admissions Operations. So I recruit from North and South Carolina and the West Coast, as well as graduate students and transfer students. Sweetbriar is an all-women institution. We are also small and private and liberal arts. We have about 400 students total. We are Division Three uh, as far as athletics. We have seven varsity teams, and we also have an equestrian program, which is one of the things that we're really well known for. And that's a great program if you've never touched a horse or ridden before. It's a great place to come and try that. And as well for us, English and creative writing, business, um, the sciences in general, and our engineering program are some of our most popular majors. And we have an ABET accredited engineering program. So we would love for you to start asking questions as they come in. We've got Tristan, she's going to monitor the chat for us and uh, just take you through and give you a little bit more information about everything. So here is our agenda for the day. 
I'm going to start off with just some overall basics, then talk about the application process more particularly, talk about your questions about financial aid and paying for college and affordability. Then we're going to get into some academic tips for transferring and social tips for transferring because those are really, really important as well to consider. And then finally, as I said, we'll do some review where we go over all the details for us in particular that, that would be good to know and then have some time left over for just general questions that you might not have had a chance to ask yet. Or if you ask a great question that everybody should hear the answer to, we might want to address that live for you. So I'll start you off with some basics. These are some of the big questions that transfer students have. Are my credits going to transfer? How many? How do I transfer them? What academic standing will I have? These are excellent questions. Basically, as long as you're taking your credits at an accredited, at a regionally accredited institution, they're going to be eligible for transfer. You do need to be earning usually at least a C average for those to be able to transfer. Um, and um, every school has a slightly different amount that they'll take. Sweetbriar, for example, takes 60. Um, um, Usually the average is maybe up to 80. I'll, I'll ask everyone in just a second, but you're not going to be able to transfer in and, and be completely done. Every college wants you to come in and, and spend a little bit of time at their institution. So every college does have a cap on how many you can transfer in. Um, usually they'll transfer in exactly, you know, where it makes sense for them to go. If you took an English class, it's going to transfer in and fulfill an English requirement. Um, if you are taking an associate's degree standard transfer track, you're going to be transferring in. And usually that's going to fulfill most of your general education requirements at the school that you're, you're looking to transfer into. There's some variation there, but that's usually what those are going to cover. If you take a more specific course or a higher level course that might transfer in specifically toward a major or specifically toward another requirement that you have. But um, most of those are going to transfer along fairly easily. If you are a full-time college student right now, you finished a year, you'll probably transfer in as a sophomore. If you're a sophomore, you'll probably transfer in as a junior. If, however, you are a dual enrollment student still in high school or you're in high school and you're doing an early college program, then you're going to come in and have the academic standing of, say, a sophomore or a junior for your credit hours. But because you've never been a full-time college student, colleges are going to have you do orientation and housing and things like that with other first-year students. They don't want you to come in and be completely overwhelmed because you're just not used to it yet. Um, and then one of the big things is most schools do have a transfer credit evaluation that you can do so that you can see exactly how many of my courses are going to come in, where are they going to go, what standing am I going to have, is it worth it, you know, for me to, to look into this school, is this, you know, the best, the best transfer decision for me. So I'll go ahead and back up just a little bit and say, uh, again, that Sweetbriar accepts about 60 credit hours. Um, Penelope, what about, what about you all? Uh, Randolph College will accept up to 68 transfer credit hours. And we take um, 76 credit hours. Lynchburg. And Hollins will accept up to 64 credit hours for transfers. All right. Thank you, ladies. Again, we'll come back and go over some of these again to round them all up at the end. But a couple other questions. Will you be eligible for scholarships? Will you be able to be part of an honors program? And the answer to both of these questions is typically yes as well. Most schools are going to consider you for scholarships at the time that you apply. You won't have to do anything special. I'll um, just um, pause really quickly. Does anyone here have any special applications that students have to fill out or is it just part of their standard application process? Are you ask, you're asking us, Savannah? Yeah. So, um, no, it's part of our application process. Uh, we Do you want me to talk about merit, our merit scholarships or our, no? Okay. All right. Yeah. No, it's just the same application. <laughs> Randolph College, it's the same. It, it comes with your application. Um, and then if any further information is needed, we'll ask you for that during admissions. Thank you. Tristan? And Holland's is the same as well. So just one general application, and then if we need additional um, information, we will reach out to you. Thank you. And what Susan was asking is a great question. So what we're talking about is the merit scholarships. Those are the ones that you're going to be considered for at the time that you apply. Those do range. Um, we've got a great uh, slide at the end that shows you the average range of scholarships for each of our institutions. Need aid does come later, and I'm going to um, let, um, I think Penelope is going to be going over the, that for us um, in just a little bit, so I'll let her cover that more in depth. But usually for merit scholarships, once you're awarded them, you're able to keep them the entire time that you're at that school working toward your degree as long as you stay in ac good academic standing. And that means that you're taking a full course load and you're keeping good grades. And then um, the honors program 
we don't have a separate application for that. You're going to be invited to be part of that at the application time as well. And usually when you're invited to an honors program, you have the option to take more rigorous courses, sometimes specialized courses that are only available for honors program students, usually special event programming that is only available for honors students, and then sometimes um, additional scholarship money. And so Sweetbriar as well offers additional scholarship money. Um, I'll pause and turn it back over. Pen Penelope, is there anything special that students have to do for you for honors program? Is there additional scholarship money? No, our honors program is based on GPA in the junior year and the declaring of the major. So um, that is all outlined in our uh, college catalog, how that would work. Um, we do have STEM scholarships that generally start with um, a first year student, but if a first year student drops out or transfers out of Randolph, those STEM scholarships up to $6,000 a year become available for upperclassmen. And those are anyone in the physical sciences. All right. Susan, what about at University of Lynchburg? So we have um, merit scholarships that are um, that are uh, up to twenty one thousand five hundred dollars, um, all the way down to fourteen thousand, depending on what your GPA is. So these scholarships are tied directly to your GPA. So you put your application in, and then the system will see your GPA, whatever's entered there, and will automatically attach that scholarship. So there's no extra pet paperwork as far as that goes. We also do have STEM scholarships too. Um, and we also have um, a NOICE scholarship, which is a teacher um, scholarship for your junior and senior year if you wanna be a math or science teacher at the high school level. And then as far as honors uh, go, we do have a Westover honors program. You need to meet a certain GPA to get into that program. And what'll happen is if you come in and, and we see your GPA is, I believe it's a 3.5, we will automatically send you up, send it over to the academic advisor of the Honors College who will re then reach out to you. Awesome. And Tristan, what about Holland? So for our honors program, um, students can declare honors once they're actually at Holland. So normally that does happen around their junior year. So you would have to have a declared GPA once you actually entered into Holland. Um, for scholarships, you are eligible for all merit scholarships. And then in terms of additional ones, we do have a Phi Theta Kappa. If you are attending a local community college and you are a member of that honor society, that would be an additional scholarship. Um, and then we just have a few others that you can apply for as well that we're happy to provide information for. All right, thank you. Sweetbriar awards merit scholarships for transfer students of up to $10,000 per year, which is about half of tuition. We also take Phi Theta Kappa. And we do also have a special STEM uh, scholarship that is just for engineering major students. Um, so a few different ones there. And the last thing I'll say is the only other thing um, that you need to make sure is that you are in good academic standing before you try to transfer and you have paid all of your debts. You will not be able to transfer if you owe money to your current institution. So this is a big thing. Um, depending on the reason that you're looking at transferring, you want to make sure you check those boxes. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Tristan for our application process. Yes, thank you. So, and what do you need to actually apply? Um, some of the things that you're going to want to look at is how or what application do, do these institutions actually take? Some institutions have their own specific one on their website. Some of them accept the common application. So one thing you'll want to do is make sure you research and see which one that they actually accept. Um, also, you'll need to see what supporting documents you may need in order to complete your application. So you'll probably need to submit your college transcript, whether it be official or unofficial just for the admissions purposes. You'll also want to check to see if additional materials such as a supplemental essay is um, needed or if you need your high school transcripts along with any test scores that you may need as well. Some schools require SAT or ACT in order to be considered just depending on how many credits that you have completed. So this is definitely something we would recommend reaching out to those institutions and doing a little bit of research to seeing what you actually need in order to complete your application for consideration. Um, what's nice about the private education aspect is that you will have admissions counselors that will work with you throughout the entire process. Um, we're very hands-on and we'll reach out if we need anything. So please feel free to contact your admission counselor at that institution and they can definitely work with you on completing your application. Um, fees associated with your application. Some schools have an application fee and some schools don't. With us, I know that for Holland, um, we waive that application fee for you, so it doesn't cost anything to apply. Savannah, what does it cost to apply to, to Sweetbriar? Sweetbriar has no application fees whatsoever. And Penelope, what about Randolph? 
We have, no, we do not and never will have application fees. Great, and Susan? We don't either, so I think you guys should just apply to all four of us. <laughs> yes, so that's one nice little bonus. Um, is that a lot of these private schools that you may be considering um, will probably have no application fees. So that's a nice little bonus as well. So definitely make sure you work with your admission counselor, but we're happy to let you know additional information if need be. In terms of timeline, something else that you'll want to be considering is what sort of um, admission deadlines just does that institution have? Do they have rolling admissions, which means that they're on a continual basis of reviewing applications and that they're pretty, pretty flexible with the deadline? Or do they have set deadlines for each semester? So this is something that you'll also want to work with your admissions counselor at that institution to really figure out what kind of their deadlines are, what's the process look like, and everything like that. Um, after you've been accepted, congratulations, that's so exciting. So now what? What do you do next? Um, in terms of next steps, one thing that you're going to want to consider is your financial aid package, which Penelope will be speaking about in just a minute. But um, you'll want to look at that. You'll want to look at your merit scholarships that you have been offered, any additional scholarship packages, that sort of thing. Take that all into consideration. You'll also want to see what the enrollment fee is, how much that is, um, when is it due, everything like that. And then some additional things that you'll want to consider are housing options, is housing guaranteed, um, and then working with an academic advisor to see how your credits will actually transfer based off of what Savannah was chatting about with the transfer credit evaluation and seeing how that will align with your major and actually completing that in a timely manner. So these are just some of the things that you'll definitely want to consider in terms of the next steps and the application process, but I'd love to turn it over to Penelope now to chat a little bit more about the financial aid process and what that looks like for transfer students. So you've been admitted to a college and uh, they are trying to send you a financial aid award and they keep telling you we need your FAFSA. Um, and you do need to file a FAFSA uh, if you have not before. The FAFSA stands for Free Application for Federal Student Aid. Um, and you can find that at FAFSA.gov. Um, the FAFSA means that you can borrow money from the federal government in student loans and also parent loans. Um, and you may be eligible for grant money up to, it's just over $6,300 a year now. Um, and that does go up every year. Um, so be sure to submit the FAFSA early to all of the colleges that you're applying to. You can add up to 10 colleges per FAFSA. And if you change your mind, you can remove colleges and put some new ones in there and resubmit it. Um, so you can send the FAFSA to everyone who needs it. Um, the new FAFSA, opens up October 1st every year for the upcoming academic year. Um, the FAFSA can be confusing. Uh, there's very nice, helpful people on their 1-800 number. If you get lost uh, trying to fill out your FAFSA, please call, or you can also call your admission counselor or the financial aid office at the school you're interested in. We're happy to help you. Um, it is sort of a different type of form than most people have done in the past. So happy to help with those questions. Financial aid is not one size fits all. <clears throat> and this is really the advantage in applying to a small private school because we have small staffs who are equipped and willing and able to help you one on one with your financial aid. Um, you may have special circumstances such as being homeless, you may be married, you're a veteran, you may not have US citizenship. All of these things can greatly affect your financial aid and not necessarily in negative ways, but you do need help from admission counselors and financial aid counselors to get you through that to maximize that aid. So please ask. Um, always ask for help and clarification. Um, don't be afraid to. Um, your question is not dumb. You have not done this before, um, or you may have done this before, but every year is a different circumstance. Um, your admission counselor is not someone just trying to get you admitted. They're your advocate, um, especially at a small private school. This is what we do. We actually get to know you, we like you, we admitted you, and we want you to come to our school. So please ask us for help. So going through to ease your admission process to make things as painless as possible, please turn in all the documents that we request from you. Um, in a timely manner. So you need to check your email every day. Um, so part of, you know, going to a new college is to check your email um, and fill out lots of paperwork, unfortunately. Um, 
apply for outside scholarships, applying for multiple scholarships and apply throughout the year. Ask your admission counselor how to find scholarship search engines and lists. Many colleges have links on their websites to help students find scholarships. There's also many types of loans and other sources to help families bridge the gap, to help pay for college. Uh, there's federal student loans, private loans, parent loans. Um, other ways that parents can help pay for college can include home refinancing, 529 plans, um, their savings and payment plans through the colleges. Uh, I know Randolph College has a payment plan. Do the other schools have payment plans as well, ladies? Yes, Sweetbriar does. Yes, Lynchburg does. And so does Hollins. Great, so a payment plan normally is based on a certain number of months, depending on when you sign up and it can break your payments up. Um, so instead of trying to pay uh, in big chunks, you break it up um, into small payments uh, without interest. So I'm like putting it on a credit card, you're saving a little money. Um, Another thing, private colleges often have other scholarships and aid opportunities for students. Be sure to ask your admission counselor what you might qualify for. For example, Randolph College offers a deep tuition and room discount to local students. We also have um, an alum discount, and I'm sure most of the other private colleges here also have some kind of legacy or alum discounts and other special scholarships, so I'll let them tell you about that. So we don't have um, special discounts for those different students who are applying, um, but we will not penalize students for any outside scholarships that you bring in. If you're able to earn a private scholarship and um, all of your other uh, scholarships are on your package already, we're gonna take down from your loans. We want to reward you for the hard work that you've done in going out to get scholarships. I think that's probably true. I see other people nodding. So I think that is the case for other schools. Susan, do you want to take it? Uh, yeah, we, um, we do have some in-house grants. It's definitely worth doing the FAFSA um, because there, you might not think you're going to get any financial aid, but you actually do, especially from private schools. We always have something up our sleeves that you might not realize. And um, so do that FAFSA, get it to us. And again, you know, we do have, just like everybody else here, uh, tons of scholarship and grant opportunities. And it's the same way with Hollins. Um, so not specifically a discount. However, we do have some additional grants and scholarships that you can be considered for um, that we have kind of like hidden a little bit that they were chatting about as well, um, just for filling out the FAFSA. And then we do have an alumni referral and legacy scholarship that students can be considered for, um, which would kind of tie to that alumni status. Um, but yes, so definitely encourage you to fill out the FAFSA if you're able to. Thank you, ladies. Um, that is good information. Again, that's that small private school thing. We, we have tricks up our sleeves, as Susan said, that um, other schools may not have. Um, and lastly, I do just want to mention um, the Virginia tuition or the Virginia transfer grant. So students who graduate from a Virginia community college with an associate's degree and then enroll within one year at a Virginia private school can get up to an additional $2,000 per year for up to three years. Um, so that is just a great program. Uh, the only extra requirement is you have to file a FAFSA because we need to know your estimated family contribution and you need to submit a transcript that shows a certified associate's degree earned from your community college. Other than that, we do all the work for you. It's very easy. Um, and now I'm going to pass it on to Susan. Hello again. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about academic tips and then some social tips. So as you consider transferring, the first person that you're probably going to reach out to and talk to once you get onto our campuses is um, an academic advisor, someone who's going to uh, put your schedule together and do some kind of a plan on what classes you're going to take each semester for the next two years, let's say. But that person is also gonna be good for helping you find um, a tutoring center or the health center or what activities might be on campus that night. So be sure to always um, build a relationship with your advisor and feel comfortable reaching out to that person. 
So with that being said, you also need to be on top of your schedule. As a transfer student, you should know what credits and how many you need to graduate from your new school. And I've used this example a few times, but my for example, my daughter went to, uh, went to a community college before um, she went to the school she's at now, and she took a public speaking class there. Well, when she got her schedule this fall, the public speaking class was on her new schedule and she had already taken that class. So just be, you know, we're all human, we make mistakes. Just make sure that you're not duplicating credits. Um, as a matter of fact, get a copy of that academic plan that you're, you and your advisor put together so that you know what you're gonna need in order to graduate and get you there on time. The next thing is participation. Don't be afraid to participate in class. You know, you're the only one who knows you're a transfer student. So if you don't tell people you're a transfer student, then no one's gonna know you're a transfer student. So, you know, talk, you know, join study groups, uh, work in group activities, talk, and then this leads to the next one, talk to your professors. Um, because your participation is imp just as important as everyone else in that class. So oftentimes as a transfer student, you might skip the 100 level classes because you took them at your old school and you'll go on to the second or third level of the class of the new school. So a good example could be that you might take Chem 111 at your old school, and then you have to take Chem 112 at your new school. Well, with that being said, the, the old school might do something totally different than the new school. So, so you need to really um, be okay, you know, talk to your professors about that. They will be okay with that. Uh, just reach out uh, to help you if you have some problems with that. All right, and then evaluate why you transferred in the first place. Make sure you're going to the right place. And if you've you know, struggled at your last school, make sure that doesn't happen again. Next, be patient. You know, it will take time to learn how a new school teaches and handles things. It's gonna take a couple months. Uh, but, but after that couple months, hopefully that school will feel like home to you. Adopt some good study habits. If you had good study habits at your old school, could roll them over to your new school. If you didn't have such good study habits at your old school, make sure you develop some at your new school. Reach out again to the advice, an advisor, a professor, find a study buddy, someone that you see that, that has good study habits, but um, definitely reach out to, to get help if you need it. And then here you are, goal setting. You're at a new school, set some short and long-term goals. Maybe some short-term goals would be, I'm gonna get all Bs next semester. Long-term goals is I'm gonna get that bachelor's degree in two years. So set some goals for yourself um, as you go forward. And then don't overload yourself. I think we probably all have seen here on this panel, uh, transfer students coming in, they take 17, 18, 19 credits. They have family obligations. They um, might have to work. And so you're all stressed out and you know things just don't go the way you want them to go. So don't overload yourself, just focus on that goal. And then hang in there, transferring is scary and can be frustrating, but hang in there. You'll be given a great education with lots of new, opportun lots of new opportunities. All right, so social tips. So say yes, take opportunities to go out with new people, participate in campus activities and, and events. If someone asks you to go to the ice cream social, go to the ice cream social. If, um, the other thing is you really should try to reach out yourself. The best way to make friends is to reach out to new people. So if you're living in a dorm, knock on the door next to you, introduce yourself. If you're in the laundry room, wash, uh, washing your clothes, introduce yourself. If you go to the dining hall and someone is sitting by themselves, introduce yourself. Most likely people are gonna be nice and they're gonna appreciate that. Um, take advantage of school events. Go to the volleyball game. Go to the information session on fraternities and sororities. Um, ask questions, I've said that before. Don't be afraid to ask your professors, advisors, or peers about getting involved. And then the next thing is get an on-campus job. There are many advantages of an on-campus job, like um, your supervisor will most likely work around your schedule. They'll help you. Um, if, you have, if you have to study, you might not have to come in, but it's also a great way to learn your campus, your school, and also meet new people. And if you can't get an on-campus job, get on campus. If you haven't explored the campus yet, get out to explore and you might learn something new and also learn something about your school. 
and um, realize you're not alone. Many transfer students feel uncomfortable in new situations, so embrace that change. And then attend an orientation. I can't emphasize this more. Most schools require students to um, attend an orientation, but this is a great way to meet other transfer students and learn all the resources at your school. I don't know, um, Penelope, do you have an orientation thing at Randolph? We do. We have a special transfer um, or adult student orientation that's separate from the first years, but they sort of join together on the very last day of orientation just before classes start. So they get a tour of the campus, find out where academic offices are. Um, they should have their schedule by then. They can walk around, um, take a tour if they haven't already, um, and meet a few new people. Great. Um, how about you, Savannah? We have a much longer, more thorough orientation for students coming in for the fall semester, and we want everyone to be part of that. We do have a shorter one for spring, um, and it's not required for spring, but we do want students to take advantage of those. We really want things there for you to opt in. Whenever you've got the opportunity, opt in to things, as, as she's been saying, just also allow time for sleep. Tristan. Yes, yeah, so we're pretty similar to Sweetbriar in the fact that we have um, a longer one for the fall, normally it's the week before classes start, a shorter one for the spring semester. Um, but with that, they're not required. However, definitely encourage just so you can meet other transfer students, you can meet with your academic advisor, ask questions, um, just get to know also where the buildings are because sometimes you can get lost on campus. So it's a nice little refresher. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, and, and ours, I don't know if I said this, but ours is, long, is a longer one in the fall, too, and it's the week before school um, starts. But, but really, they, those orientations, they typically are required, but definitely go. Um, living on campus, I know everyone can't do this, but if you can live on campus, there are countless opportunities to meet new people and develop lasting friendships. Um, you have instant access to campus events. So, uh, if it's a po possibility, I would definitely encourage that you live on campus. And then the other um, thing is volunteering. I'm proud to say here at Lynchburg, we have about 70,000 hours, volunteer hours on, uh, recorded from last year from our students. It is um, not only a great way to build your resume, but it's a great way to help the community. And it's also a great way to make some friends. I'm gonna go ahead and ask every, the other panelists, Savannah, do you guys have volunteer opportunities on your campus? Yes, so Sweetbriar has lots of volunteer opportunities as well. Almost all of our clubs have it built into their charter that they will give back to the community in some fashion. And most of our students are active in clubs. Um, it's a huge part of our life here at Sweetbriar. Penelope? Yeah, Randolph has a really strong tradition of social activism um, and volunteerism uh, in the community, in our internships, in our student activities. So that is a, a big part of our um, student life. Um, and, and those kind of events can happen at all times, day or night or weekend. So a transfer or a commuter student or an adult student should not feel that they cannot get involved. Those opportunities come up all the time. That's right. And Tristan? And we're also very similar to the other institutions that they mentioned. Um, so a lot of our community service is also done through clubs and organizations, as well as we do have some abroad trips that go and do some service trips too. Um, but definitely community service is very, very high on our, our students to do list. Sorry about that. I, I hope you guys aren't hearing that. But, um, but anyway, um, we, um, hold on one second. Never mind. Sorry about that little, thought I had shut that off. But anyway, um, make sure that you check out our schools. Honestly, these are four good small private liberal arts campuses here uh, with, small campuses, or with small campuses, close relationships with the students uh, and very pretty campuses. We all have visit days. You could come see all four of our schools probably in about a day and a half and we're all in the Roanoke Lynchburg area. Thanks again, I'm gonna send it back to Savannah. All right, thank you, ladies. Um, as I mentioned, we wanted to go over everything again at the end here. We are getting toward the end of our time. We've got about 10 minutes left. So I'm gonna ask that we all run through this um, fairly quickly though, so that we can each just articulate any last details here and then give you all some chance to ask questions that might not have been asked so far. So Hollins, um, if I could get Tristan to share your details here for Hollins. 
Sure, thank you. Um, so for our application deadline, we're on rolling admissions. So that means that we review the applications throughout the entire year. Um, we'll essentially accept applications up until a week before classes start. So we'll definitely work with you on that. We don't have an application fee, as I mentioned before. Um, we also accept a maximum of transfer credits of 64 transfer credits coming in. And with the application process, we do ask that you just have a minimum cumulative GPA of a 2.5 or greater in order to be considered for admission. And then also to fulfill the general education requirements to come in and start with the, um, or pass those, I should say, um, we have a transfer module. And so you'll actually complete different classes in different categories in order to fulfill that. And I'm happy to answer any additional questions that you may have about that. Randolph College also has rolling admissions and no application fee. Uh, we'll take up to 68 transfer credits. Um, with a 2.5 GPA, you are guaranteed admission, but I do encourage anyone under that to still apply and I will work with you one on one on uh, maybe submitting test scores or a personal essay. Um, for general education program requirements, our students are individually advised on what our requirements are and what may be needed. All right, Sweetbriar is also rolling admissions. Just like Tristan said, we've worked with students the week before classes to get you taken care of. So don't feel like it's too late to apply. We have no application fee. We'll take up to 60 credit hours from transfer credits. We also guarantee admissions for at least a 2.5 GPA if you're coming from a regionally accredited institution. Um, but again, just like Penelope said, for all of us, if you don't quite meet that threshold, reach out anyway. We all work with our students holistically, so we all wanna work with you. And then we no longer have a gen ed program, but if you've come in with one, it will fulfill all of our new core program requirements. Okay, and at the University of Lynchburg, we also have um, rolling admission, no application fee. We do take in about, we will take in up to 76 credits and you need a minimum GPA of a 2.0. If you get an associate's degree, that is gonna complete your general education requirements here at the University of Lynchburg, except for the foreign language and the senior seminar. Thank you, ladies. And just a quick shake of the head, if this isn't true for anyone, we didn't bring this up, I don't think. We all take the Common App. Is there anyone here that doesn't take that? So that's another thing that can make things easier for students. Every single one of us takes the Common App if you want to apply that way. All right, and then we'll take you through the last few bits here. I'll turn it over to Tristan again to start with Holland. Yes, so for merit scholarships, um, we offer up to $25,000 per year, and this is based off of your cumulative GPA that you've already achieved. For need-based aid, um, it just depends. It depends on the, some individual information that we do ask for the FAFSA for. So if you are interested in being considered for any federal or financial aid, we ask that you submit the FAFSA. And then for housing, we do have guaranteed housing for all four years for students under the age of 24. Um, if you're above the age of 24, it is optional. If you'd like to live on campus, you're more than welcome to, but if not, it's not required. So it's completely up to you, but it's guaranteed for all your time during at Collins. Randolph College offers merit aid to all students. It is based on GPA. Um, and then need aid also varies and the FAFSA is required. And we do work with all students and families one-on-one -on -one to try and meet their need. Um, we do have guaranteed housing for students under 24 years of age. Um, students with any, you know, married student, children over 24, uh, we can uh, help them with some of their housing costs. Um, and we have a commuter student option available. All right, Sweetbriar offers full-time transfer students a top merit scholarship of up to $10,000 per year that is also based on GPA. All merit scholarships are going to be based on previous academic performance. We do need your FAFSA form in order to award you need-based aid. That's true um, for, I think, all of us. So please go ahead and do your FAFSA. There's no cost for that. We also guarantee housing for students under the age of 24, but if you are under 24 with extenuating circumstances like Penelope was mentioning, like you have a child or other things going on, then we'll work with students um, for different options. And we do have housing for students over the age of 24, both in um, some dorm options as well as apartment style options. And at the University of Lynchburg, we offer merit scholarships up to 21.5 per year based on your GPA. We also, it does vary for us too, as far as your need, um, but the FAFSA would be required for uh, any need-based aid. We do have a transfer house. Um, so it's, I believe there's eight spots. So, you know, it, it's been a kind of a unique experience for those students transferring in, in addition to upper-class housing. And we do at guarantee housing 
uh, for anyone under the age of 24. All right, thank you ladies again. So we have about five minutes left. We would love to take any questions that you haven't had a chance to ask yet. Tristan is monitoring chat. If you have a question for one of us in particular, we can answer those or we can just all go through and answer. So I'm gonna turn it over to Tristan and see what's going on. Yes, thank you. So we did have a couple questions that came through. Um, one was specifically for Susan with the University of Lynchburg. Um, she said that you mentioned something about the language requirement for University of Lynchburg, but they missed that. What was that about? Could you clarify that, please? I sure can. So uh, Lynchburg has a foreign language requirement. You have to take um, two semesters of a foreign language. And I know if you're going to CVC, if you're, I don't know if you all are local from CVCC, CVCC's language classes are four credit classes. So if you took like Spanish 101 and 102, that would fulfill it. But our foreign language uh, requirement is basic is actually a six credit foreign language requirement of two three credit classes so in addition so if you get your associates if you are working on your associates it would be in your best interest to try to go ahead and fit the um, foreign language into as an elective or a humanities credit thank you and I think one nice thing about a private institution is that we'll really work with you on this so if you have questions about fulfilling general education classes or coming in with a certain status level, like junior versus sophomore and that sort of thing, um, reach out to us because we're happy to answer those questions for you and work with you on that. Um, another question that came through is how many credits are considered full-time? So to be a full-time student at Holland University, it's 14 credit hours per semester, um, but it really just depends on how many credits you want to take. I know a lot of schools will offer students the opportunity to part-time versus full-time, but Savannah, what is full-time status for you all at Sweetbriar? So um, it's pretty close to the same thing. We do have a few credit hour courses that vary, but generally it's between 12 and 15 credit hours per semester, depending on what you're taking. And Penelope, what about you? Uh, Randolph College, it's 12 credit hours per semester is full-time for undergrad. Yeah, and, and at Lynchburg, it's between 12 and 18 credit hours. Great, thank you. Um, and Susan, just a follow-up question for you um, in regards to the foreign language requirement. Mm -hmm. uh, they ask, would we have to take the um, language classes at Lynchburg? So you don't, if you take it at, at, at the community college, you don't. Um, but if, if you don't take it at the community college, then you do. And I see the next one is about American Sign Language, and yes, that does count as a foreign language at Lynchburg. Great, thank you. Uh, another question that we received is, are university fees covered in a merit scholarship? Um, Penelope, Penel what about Randolph College? How do they cover that? So at, at Randolph College, all of your financial aid um, goes towards covering your total cost. So it's, there's no, not money earmarked for, this is for fees, this is for your books, this is for tuition, this is for room and board. It all goes into a big pot known as your credits. And then everything else is your expenses, what you owe. Um, and then we subtract it that way. And Susan, what about Lynchburg? Um, so, so the merit scholarship, it, it's not necessarily uni university fees. It would typically go towards tuition. It would be, it would be part of the whole financial aid package, but um, it could go towards uh, university fees, but most likely it would go towards your tuition. And Savannah, what about you? So for us, um, merit scholarships are gonna be primarily toward tuition. If you um, covered most of those, we could probably apply them toward fees. Our fees are fairly minimal, so that's not a, a big concern. Um, but they don't typically cover room and board. Room and board are not typically covered by those. However, if you completely had all of your um, tuition covered by internal scholarships and you also brought in outside scholarships, as long as the organizations who've awarded those allow it, then that could go toward room and board. Um, that's really just a matter of working with the private scholarship company that you've been awarded from. And Holland's is the same as Sweetbriar, so um, a lot of those fees um, are kind of tied in, but merit scholarships normally go towards tuition, and then if you have any outside scholarships, we can definitely apply them towards room and board or any other fees that we may have as well. So once again, really just work with the institution and make sure that you're communicating with your admission or financial aid counselor, and we're happy to help walk you through that whole process because we know how confusing it can be. 
Um, but it looks like we're out of time right now. So we just wanted to wrap up and thank you so much. And we appreciate you coming to our session. And if you have additional questions, please feel free to screenshot our information or take down our information. We're happy to um, answer things at the end of this. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you. Come visit us. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you all so much for joining. Um, please be sure to note that there is a quick survey that will pop up when you close the window. Um, it's four questions. Please feel free to give StriveScan any feedback that you may have. Sign up for more sessions. They are available at strivescan.com slash Virginia, as well as all of the recordings will be posted about a week from now from all of these sessions. So please feel free to go back and check out anything that maybe you didn't have time for in your daily schedule. Um, and so please be sure to do that. Let these uh, fine folks know if you have any further questions. And thank you all for joining us. Well, you guys, except for my phone going off. Um, <laughs>